All right, so I wanna make this extremely tangible and realistic for the viewer. So in this example, the company that I'm doing this for did $2 million in the prior calendar year. And they're saying, all right, I wanna be able to do $3 million or $4 million in the upcoming year, right? That, that's what I want to be at. That's where I genuinely want to do in revenue for my business. And by December, by the end of December, if I'm on a, a $4 million run rate at a bare minimum, I'm gonna be really happy. So the total revenue collected in the upcoming year, 3 million, but by December, I'm on a run rate to go for the following year of 4 million in annual revenue. And if I do 4 million next year, but you know, I'm trending to do 5 million the following year, same thing, I'm gonna be really happy. Now, most people just set this and they don't actually use this to back into their daily, weekly, monthly and quarterly actions. When you reverse engineer your success, you can compound your success. So there's a few things that we actually need to look at to be able to do this the right way. When I look at this business, right, in this subset, they're sending about 50 appointments a month. They're closing about 12 deals per month. And the average price point in this example, let's just call it 2000, right? Now, if we scroll down in this example, $2,000 in average deal size, 12 deals per month and 12% churn rate. Now this business, if it keeps going on based on the MRR cap, will do 200,000. And just for context, this formula is your average price multiplied by your deals closed per month on average. And then you divide that number by your churn rate percentage. Churn is calculated by your average amount of clients that you lose per month divided by your total clients. And if you average that out, that's your churn rate. Now, what you wanna say is, okay, I'm currently at, I did 2 million next year. I wanna be able to do 3 million. Based on this data, the MRR cap just means when this business will plateau, its churn will equal the amount of clients it's bringing in. So this business based on price will not be able to exceed $200,000 in recurring revenue. They could either bring on more deals or keep their clients longer, but that is it. So the thing that you wanna think about in your business, number one, what are these numbers? And then number two, what do you really need to fix? Because you could only fix two sides of this equation. On the front end, you could fix the amount of appointments you're setting, right? So you could say, okay, I want to be, if I want to get to 2 million, you know, in this equation, I don't think I could change my churn rate, but I think I could increase the amount of deals I close. So just for context, if you're doing about $83,000 in monthly recurring revenue, that's 1 million. If you're doing like 166, 167 per month, that's about 2 million. And then if you add another 83,000, right, you're going to be at $3 million annualized run rate. So for this business, they're trying to get to about $250,000 per month in revenue, 240, 250K. That's where they need to go to. So the first thing they could look at this equation and say, shit, like I actually don't really need to change the amount of deals I'm bringing on, but if I change my churn rate, I'll get really close, right? Or if they say, hey, if I change this number from 12 deals per month to 13, I could get to 260 per month, which at that run rate, 8, 16, 24, right? You're going to be really close to your you know, $3 million in annual recurring revenue, which is it's 250K per month. So what you want to start doing, in my opinion, if you have this end goal in mind, you have to play with the numbers first, right? You want to give a bunch of different variations on how this can play out. How many deals do you want to be able to do? And then say, this is what I believe is going to be the easiest constraint to solve first. It's either deals closed or churn, right? And that's it, right? It's your business is a function of four things, leads, deals, capacity, how many clients you can onboard and maintain at one time and churn percentage, which is lifetime value. How long do clients stay with you and pay you? So the first thing I believe when it comes to your goal setting, you say an intention, I would like to do this number, right? And then you say, is that number realistic? You play with this equation, the MRR equation, right? And through this, you could give a bunch of different variations on how you could hit 260. Like in this case, this business owner could say, oh, if I only close one more deal a month, which if you go into this formula and you say, how can I get to 12 deals a month? Okay. If I, oh crap, if I'm setting 50 appointments, I could do 55 appointments per month. I could, I could get to 13 deals, right? So 13 deals, 12%. Oh boy. Like I could definitely set five more appointments per month at my current data set, right? And just take a screenshot of this data set because it's, this equation automatically calculates appointments set per month multiplied by how many people are actually gonna show up. You take that number and you multiply by how many people are qualified. And when you pitch, what percentage closes? 
So this number is just indicative of past performance. So when you do this, you start to set intentions on what you can improve. Can you close more deals? Can you increase your capacity? Can you increase your lead flow? Can you improve how many people show up to your calls? Can you improve your churn percentage? And that's that's the function of business. So then you say, okay, of all these things, I think the easiest for me and my business is going to be to close more deals. I genuinely believe I can move from 12 to 14 deals per month without changing anything, right? And in this instance, that will change this business's run rate from 200K per month to about 233 per month. That's what this owner believes is the easiest thing. So then he says, okay, if I want to get to 14 deals per month, I need to be able to set more leads because I've already worked on my no-show percentage on call one. That's exceptional. Qualified, you know, I don't think I could change that much and my closing rate's really high. So this person might say, the only thing I can do is change how many deals I'm closing. And the only variable in this example, they keep playing with the numbers, is I need to set 59 appointments a month. And just for measure, they're going to say 60, right? So at 60 appointments per month, they say, okay, that's what I need to do. And in this example, let's say they book calls from Twitter, from SEO, and from YouTube. And between the two of them, they book 20 calls per month and it's all 100% inbound. Now this person might say, if I wanna get to 80 to 60 calls per month, right? their quarterly goal is book 60 calls per month. Because if they could accomplish that goal, by the end of the quarter, they're gonna be on track to hitting their year's goal. And if they're going to be on track to 60 appointments per month, then the question becomes the next thing. What is the next thing? If I could only accomplish one thing in the next month to book 60 calls per month, then they're booking 50. They need to be able to book 60. And let's just say, using me as an example, because this actually happened for me in my business, I'm booking about eight calls per month at the time of this recording from YouTube. I'm producing one quality video like this per month on YouTube. So I say, you know what? I logically believe if I move my video production from one video a week to two videos a week, I can be able to hit that goal of being able to book 10 more calls on top of what I'm currently doing. So the first thing I'm going to say is, okay, I will have to, you know, produce in the next month. Let's just say it's a month where there's like four and a half weeks. I produce nine YouTube videos and build system to produce two videos per week. And let's just say, they don't want to put all their eggs in the basket of YouTube, right? So then they say, okay, what else am I doing? I'm on Twitter. I, you know, but I'm not really doing any email. So then we want to, by the end of the next month, introduce cold email, have system, system up and running, right? So they say, okay, I think if I start doing cold email, if I'm closing at 50%, because it's all inbound leads, I could probably close deals at 25%. So they might say, I probably need to book 10 calls a month alone from cold email. So they talk to their friend, you talk to a consultant, and then you make an educated guess based on your expert. The expert that you talk to, someone that's already using cold email, and they say, hey, if you want to book 10 calls a month from cold email, you need to be able to have, let's just say, 20,000 cold emails sent per month, right? Because that's what the expert told you. Now you're going through each one of these things and you're just writing out the goals. Write out script for four YouTube videos. And then for cold email, hire agency to set up and warm up, let's call it 20 domains for cold email. When you break these things down, you now make them hyper tangible to be able to be realistic on getting to your outputs and they compound, they give you legitimate confidence knowing if I do this thing and my forecast is correct, I will hit my goal. Because business in the simplest terms, it's all about having an intention and objective. And in this case, this person wants to do three or $4 million in revenue in the upcoming year. And then saying, I believe if I do this action, I will then be able to accomplish this goal. If you look at the numbers and you use a calculator like I am, you can logically say, oh, that's very realistic. The best entrepreneurs are able to take goals and then create forecasts. And the ones who are able to say, I believe I can accomplish this in the upcoming 12, 6, 3, 18 months, whatever your time frame is. And the ones that are the closest to being accurate, the process of this is my forecast, this is what happens and what I actually do and what the result is, those are the ones that can minimize that margin of difference and be as close as possible to actually be wildly successful. This is how I view goal setting. This is how we actually implement goal setting in my company. It's a data-driven approach. Now, 
you might be watching this and might be thinking, Jordan, this seems simple, but I'm a little overwhelmed or this is a little bit confusing and I need some support doing this for my business. And no worries. Feel free to go to the call link below and chat with us. We'll set up a free consultation with you on setting up your goals, intentions, and data for the upcoming calendar year or even for the upcoming quarter based on when you watch this. And if you've enjoyed this video, if it's added value to you, go to the subscribe button below and like this video. My intention is to deliver value add content to your feed every single week so you can grow your business faster, easier to ultimately live the life of your dreams. Thank you.